How's it going? Welcome to Creative Questions, a podcast where I bring on creatives and ask them questions. And it's seriously as simple as that. I can ask them silly questions. I can ask them deep questions. I can ask them businessy questions. I have the ability to ask them any question that I want. And that's what we'll do here today. So let's get into it and have some fun. On today's episode, we have another amazing guest, the font man himself, Trey Seals. Trey Seals plans to ease the world out of its Helvetica obsession, one font at a time. After becoming frustrated by the monotony of the graphic design industry, he started his own foundry, Vocal Type, which he runs out of a refurbished stable on his family's farm. Instead of focusing solely on aesthetics, Seals creates his typefaces based on significant moments in black history and culture. Vocal Type launched in 2016 as Seals' side gig, and his work gained popularity after the murder of George Floyd, when the design industry started making more of an effort to seek out black creatives. Since then, it's grown into a full-time operation, and his typefaces have been tapped for Black Lives Matter murals, Spike Lee's recent monograph, and the Amazon Labor Union logo. Last November, he even snagged a spot on Forbes' 30 under 30 list. But being one of the few African American type designers in the world isn't easy. And here is Trey Seals. Dope. I think we're live. How are you doing, Trey? I'm doing pretty good, and you? Happy Friday. Yeah, it, this week has gone by so fast. I always appreciate a quick week. <laughs> so I'm so excited to have you on. I feel like I've been following your work for a while. Um, I sat down the other day and like read through a couple of your, your other interviews. I was like, I got to get prepped for this one. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so I was really like excited to kind of get, get into it and, and have a conversation with you. So um, we're just going to go ahead and kick it off with a, a very base question just to get to know you a little bit better. How did you learn that type making was a career? Like, where did that all start? How did you even, like, get into that? Most definitely. Um, I think it's more like graphic and graphic design and type. I realized it was a career after looking at um, Pharrell's In My Mind album. <laughs> oh, wow. I think I was in middle school. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, I was in middle school, I think, when it came out. And he had, like, this little avatar character that he made for his covers, or I think Nigo made it, who ran the clothing company, Bape. And um, he had this generator where you could make your own avatar. And I couldn't get any of the settings to look like me. So I tried to make my own. <laughs> That's what got me into graphic design. But then I wanted the font to match my avatar. <laughs> <laughs> and I came across this font foundry called House Industries, which turns out mm. that's who made the font on the album cover. And that was my first time ever hearing about a font foundry or like font designers, period. And I was like, oh, snap. So pretty much everything that you see is somebody's career, which was mind blowing to me as a kid that age. And that's what really got me looking into not only type, but starting to get into graphic design a bit. Dang, that's really cool. I I, I really feel that because like I feel like my first entry to all of this was also hip hop, like album covers, and you're just like, yep. um, man, how like how do they even make this? Is is what like right. even now I'll look at like a commercial and I'll be like, how do they even do this? And it like blows my mind a little right. bit. And then you go and you look a little deeper, you learn a little bit more, and you're like, ah. Oh, Three years from now, you're able to kind of create that same thing. Um, so that's exactly. always really cool. I love the the intrigue and like, hey, how do I go do this myself? Especially in when you're young, you're not always like, I, don't, I know my parents weren't like that. <laughs> so did you like, was that yourself, that interest, that wanting to figure out? Was that, did that passion come from you or did, had you seen other people with that type of passion? That came from me. Um. I didn't know any graphic designers. I didn't know any type of designers. Uh, like the closest I got to design was my dad. He used to teach drafting classes. 
uh, back in the 70s. Um, and I had a few families that were like painters, but otherwise, nope, it was just me. Dang, that's so cool. Okay, let's hop into another one. If you could invite three people to dinner, who would they be? Oh, man, that's rough. <laughs> um, goodness. Joshua Darden. Um, he used to run this company called Darden Studio. Okay. And it's, it's really interesting. Um, so he is, as far as we know, the first black font designer in the world. Oh, and wow. And he started his company in 2005. <laughs> now, I'm sure there were type designers before this. Um. But they either, either didn't get credit or didn't exist. We just don't know. They're just not in the history books. So as far as we know, he's the first black type designer in the world in 2005. <laughs> um, so he's one for sure. Yeah. Isn't that wild? That's wild. And, um, right. Yeah. Um, I think there's only like maybe a dozen black font designers in the world at this point. And I think... Maybe half of them or less than half of them are practicing type designers. It's wild. I did not um, know that. I didn't one. know it was that few. Yeah. yeah. It's it's wild. So there are only around a little over 200 type designers in the world who design type for a living. That's why. <laughs> and out of that 200, there are only 12 that are black. And out of that 12, I think maybe five or six are practicing. Jeez. And you're one of those. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's wild. Um, there was this lecture a few years ago, 2019, before the pandemic, where this uh, these designers from a font foundry called Dalton Mog, they're out of London, I believe, um, actually told us about this, that there are only 200 practicing type designers who, in the world. Now, there are people who design type out there, but it's not their full-time job. <laughs> mm, only gotcha, 200. Gotcha. That is a full time job. Um, so yeah, D Joshua Darden is number one, and uh, my guy Tao Lemming, he was the guy that really got me interested in type design. He um, did this lecture and exhibition at my university during my senior year of college, and as the universe would have it, he actually worked for House Industries, the company that designed the type of Rel's album cover. <laughs> Shoot, that's um, crazy! I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure if he actually worked on that typeface, but he used to work quite heavily with them. Um, so he's number two on that list for sure. And then there's, it's number three is a tough one because there's two people I'm thinking of, but um, I'll have to go with uh, James Edmondson from Oh No Type Co. He's just oh, the I coolest guy. Yeah. yeah, he's just the coolest guy. He makes the wildest typefaces you will find right now. <laughs> and... Um, He's been a huge help to me in my career, so shout out to him. Yeah, I've been trying to, anytime I can, I try to sneak in and oh no typeface. I was working on a project right. the, the beginning of this week, and I was trying to uh, sneak in swear. And of course, they were like, oh, yeah. nah, this is too edgy. And I'm like, ah, I got I to make it work. I'm going to make it work one of these days. Right. But I'm always sure. trying to sneak in one of theirs. Um, I'm For your stuff, too, I, I had a project we worked on in Richmond, and I was like, Hey, we oh. got this. I think it was Martin. I was like, we got Martin. This is a, uh, we're trying to support black youth here. This is, this is a good one to try. So I'm always trying to sneak in. I'm, I'm a, I love type. So it's like one of those things that I'm always like looking into and trying to be like, how can we move type forward? How can we be using something that's a little, little different than Futura? Like Futura does have its applications, but let's try to get some more. There's a lot of people making some cool stuff. So. Um, Most definitely. It, it's always like cool. And that's one of the other things that was like had me fanboying is like I've been seeing your stuff everywhere. Like Martin has been everywhere. Like, how does that feel? It feels so weird. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so like I made Martin back in 2016. That was the first font. I ever released through vocal type in my first real font that I ever made. I made fonts before, but none of them none of them were actually working font files. So I say mm. Martin is my first working font. And I'm like, I've released so much stuff since then. Y'all still just want my first? 
but it's but it's also really weird to see it because it's a type of design I don't, I specifically work in black and white. Like there's no instance in which I would try to see what a font looked like in color. And sometimes I have to do a double take. Like, is that Martin? Is that so and so? I can't tell because it's in color. <laughs> oh, that's um, crazy. So in, yes, and like just adding color to it changes the entire look and feeling of it. Um, like someone, I forget the name of the studio, but they had used Martin for a Juneteenth celebration at the National, what was it? The Black History Museum in D.C. And I could not tell it was Martin in the logo they had made for the museum <laughs> for, for Juneteenth. Dang. And until they messaged me and told me about it. Because I had seen it dozens of times, but I just couldn't tell. <laughs> um, so it's been like a really humbling experience. Um, I think what I'm most proud of is seeing it used for the Amazon Labor Union and for some mm-hmm. BLM street murals. Those are like my top two. <laughs> yeah, I saw it for the Labor Union. I was like, dang, that's just to, I mean, but you you know, you know, knew, it seems like the way that you kind of moved over to font and like the message you put behind it and like building out, well, I'm going to do something that is influenced by movements that are so like larger than life. There's no way that they won't get used in instances where this change or whatever's going, like whatever's happening, is gonna be possibly larger than life. So it's really cool to see, like, it have that energy behind it, and then also get used in instances where that energy is probably gonna show up. So Thank I you so much, but I got I got to be honest with you though, I I didn't think of any of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking too much into it. <laughs> you thinking too much into it? I was <laughs> like. I was like, I was working for these design companies and in-house design teams and every place I went, I'm the only person of color in the office and like vocal type was my outlet. Yeah, man. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about who was going to be using it. I just needed to make it for myself. <laughs> and then thankfully they were there at the right time. <laughs> that's so, so crazy. Cause like, that's how, I mean, but I guess that's how I'd be feeling too. Like that creative itch is more important than like, what I'm making. It's just like, I got to get this out. And it's like, I just never, when you're like, okay, I'm just going to use protest signs to influence this. It's crazy that you wouldn't think that like, oh yeah, this is a big thing, but that makes sense. If you're like, this is my only outlet. I, that's how my experience too. I was a uh, in, engineering student. So in college, okay. I was like the only, it was like maybe two of us in a class. When I got to like the higher level class, it was just me. And then I graduate and go out into like get my first engineering job. And again, in an office, I it's just me. And then Mike yeah. Brown happens and I'm like, I have no sanctuary. Like I have nowhere to go. I have to come and sit and stare these people in the face every day, knowing that they saw the same news that I saw. So I'm sure right. you have like you have, that's your experience too, right? Is that how it felt? For sure. Yeah, like I hate saying this, but it needs to be said. George Floyd made me famous, and I hate that. Oh. <laughs> um, like I, like I always talk about how I hate that. Like no matter how hard I work, no matter how talented I think I am, I'm here because of George Floyd. Like it just so happened that come like I've been working on vocal type for four years now. Had only three thousand followers, and they were all pretty much black and brown folks. That's the type of fonts I was making at the time. And I was running Studio Seals full time. I had a brand consultancy that I started in 2015. So like Mm -hmm. while I was working for people, I was working after hours doing freelance work. And all of a sudden, George Floyd happens and Vocal is on every support black design list. And I go from 3,000 followers to over 13,000 in a month. Jeez. (laughs) And all of a sudden, I have to shut down my brand consultancy to focus on Vocal because all of a sudden, everybody's interested. (laughs) Um, that's crazy. That's how that really happened. Yeah. So that's so how that transition like, at all. <laughs> yeah. Not success at all. <laughs> you were like, I just was just hanging out one day, and then everybody showed up at my door. Hey, you're the man, right. and you're like, I, I guess I'm the man. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's rough. That's rough. Yeah. So, um, one of my questions was, what was your like? first job like what's the original job you've ever had
my okay, so technically my first job was working for my parents. They run their own company. Okay. They've been doing my dad's been doing this since 1980. And my mom's been working with him since 1990. And uh, so the technical term is they run a soil manufacturing company. But if you want to get real, they make dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, they Jeez. make dirt. <laughs> so I started so I started working with them every summer since eighth grade through college. <laughs> Just and that making was dirt. My first real that was my first job. Yep, making dirt. And um it's actually really wild. There's like this whole science behind it and whatnot. But um yeah, so I've been working with them and that's really where I got my business sense from. I always had in mind that I would run my own company. I never saw myself working for someone for, for a long time. And uh, so that was my first job, but then when I in what was it 2014 i got this internship in minneapolis actually and i lived there for two or three months um so that was my first internship and when i graduated i had a ton of job offers from all these companies and i ended up taking a job at a staffing agency in dc and i was their first full-time hire which meant i didn't get to pick where i worked as long as it was for more than a month <laughs> oh jeez. Um, so- so, yeah, so as long as you had a job for me for longer than a month, I was full time. And I worked with them for two years, worked for like seven or eight different companies and got a crap ton of experience, which was my plan. So I could start my yeah. own company one day, get into all these different industries and how studio agency, everything in between. And uh, that was my first big actual design job, I guess you can say, outside the internship. Dang. So what kind of stuff were you touching? Like what type of work were you doing? Was it like brand or? Um, yeah, it was mostly branding. Um, okay. I had a few editorial design projects. I think I had one or two of those and a few like social media design posts, Instagram design posts, things like that. And I think Facebook was still kind of popular then, so Facebook banners. Mm. <laughs> and um, but most of it was branding. Um, my biggest contract was with this um this company called Compass. Have you heard of Compass? Uh, I don't think so. They're like, a lot of people hear about it. It's this, like this luxury real estate company. And I think they were like okay. the first real estate company to ever have an app. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, they were just kind of blowing up all of a sudden as well. And I went to work for them when they had just opened the DC office. And What's interesting about Compass is aside from the home buying app, they also have an app for the realtors to manage their sales Mm -hmm. and things like that. And when you become a realtor at Compass, they only deal in luxury properties, first of all. And when you become a realtor at Compass, each realtor gets their own logo, their own brand identity. (laughs) And (laughs) I'm the second designer to be hired in the DC office that just opened and they already have a thousand agents. So we got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so I think I worked for them for like seven months. Uh, and I did like a hundred uh, brand identities. Plus we're making their postcards, their brochures, their booklets. Um, I even designed a few maps, <laughs> which was really interesting. Um, so there was a lot, there was a lot of work. Um, but probably my favorite project, which was a really interesting one because I never actually met the people I was working with, but I rebranded the DC Jewish Community Center. Oh, wow. <laughs> which was uh, a really interesting and really fun project. It was my really first culturally relevant project mm-hmm. outside of vocal type. Uh, so that's probably my favorite project out of everything I worked on during that time. Dang, that's cool. To do that many identities, I'm sure it becomes like you start uh, seeing that, like all the elements start popping out to you. You know exactly what to do at that point. So that's crazy. Yeah, that and like doing that many brand identities. I talk about this a lot in the vocal type story, but like doing that many brand identities and going through the same process of trying to find Uh. the best inspiration and the best fonts it just gets to this point where everything looks the same yeah <laughs> it's just point, like I'm plug just and play sure I, didn't, I didn't do something i already did yeah <laughs> 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 one person isn't made to make that many identities yeah <laughs> so yeah that yeah, makes I sense mean, like yeah so like on top of you know freelancing after hours and technically running studio seals uh i had over 250 clients in five years <laughs> 
It was a lot. <laughs> Jeez. Should call me up. I'd be like, hey, man, I got you. <laughs> yeah, that's nah, crazy. No. <laughs> I didn't, I, yeah. I mean, that's great, though. That's like a great place to start. Yeah. And it, it makes sense. Um, with you like starting your own thing, that makes sense to have that many clients like under your belt to be able to kind of go out and do right. that. Um, that's For sure. that's kind of what you showed up to to do. <laughs> I that's what my yeah. idea was too when I first got out. I was like, I'm gonna get as much experience as fast as possible because. I, and I didn't have like a real reason. I was like, I'm going to climb the ladder as fast as I can. That was just always the right. idea that I had. But I found out that ladder was just like the rungs were broken. I wasn't going to make it nowhere. So um, that's right. just, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's sad. But like, that's where I'm it like, is. now, like, now I can do the things that I want to do. So, yeah, like for me, like I owe a lot to uh, AIGA DC. Mm-hmm. Um, I got so many opportunities through them. Like, I'm I'm a goals guy. I like setting deadlines for goals. And for some reason, <laughs> during my senior year of college, I made a pact with myself that by the time I was 25, I would become an internationally renowned designer. I know what that meant. <laughs> I know what that looked like. But I wanted it for myself. And I set my deadline. And a month after I turned 25, I got my first real big project with Adobe. <laughs> Dang. And, I was, and that was what really got me started. And it was like, all of a sudden, I finally get clients through Studio Seal. So now I got to shut it down to run vocal type, which I was per- yeah. perfectly fine with, to be honest, because I enjoy type design more than branding at this point. But um, yeah, I'm a goals guy, <laughs> setting deadlines for those. Guys. Dang. That, and that's one thing that I've very like realized about you is I'm like, this guy's very well studied. He he's like you 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 know the history you you've done the looking you've done the and then you're all you're very, it seems like you're very well connected you've you've done the reaching out you've done the networking and like oh. and the goals make sense like it makes sense that that's what's kind of right. gotten you here um, and I definitely your the success that you've had it like it gives me like joy to kind of watch and be a part and like. Hey, I get to watch this guy from a distance, but it's like cool to kind of <laughs> cheer on. It feels like we're on the same team and like cheer on people that look like you. Um, so that's that's Thank always so really dope. Um, I think we're gonna I throw it into it. like a really random question: Is cereal soup? I always love this question because you get to see how people's wills turn. <laughs> I mean, technically. <laughs> technically? <laughs> technically, like, I don't know if people would agree with that on just, like, an idea level. But I think if you want to get technical about what soup is versus what cereal is, like, it's just cold soup. <laughs> That's right. And I always love these type of questions because it's like – I. I mean, technically, we have to call it that. Like, it's interesting that we yeah. don't, like, we have so many things in our world where we're like, well, it's this because I said so. And it's like, well, yeah. if you think about it, it's completely, right. like, a hot dog is 100% right. a sandwich. Right. It's, yeah, it's, for sure. It fits in the yeah. category. Well, it's, well, it's, like, it's like that question of, um, like, are all these vegetables fruits because they have seeds in them? And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and like I don't think so. I always thought fruits were sweet, but <laughs> yeah, and it's like it, it kind of gets like archaic where we're like, oh well, we made these definitions a long time ago, and like oh, someone made a new oh, banana man. yesterday, <laughs> right? So like it's, it's really off topic, but I'm really big into like the Dude. words come from and like the meaning on the definitions of things and how archaic so many of them are. So like. When I was running Studio Seals, I wanted to be real clever and had like this mail theme and had like a wax seal and carried a mail bag to my interviews Ooh. and whatnot. And you know what? You won't believe what sincere means. The word without sincere? Without wax. Yes. Sincere just means without wax. <laughs> That's where it comes from. No way. <laughs> you sent a letter without a wax seal. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's some wild stuff. Or like... um. When I was working on Dream and Color, my book, I found I looked up the definition of black art in the dictionary. And 
The definition of black art is witchcraft and necromancy. That is why. And that's still in the dictionary it's, like that. It's still in the dictionary. Like, you can Google up the definition of black art right now, and it'll tell you witchcraft and necromancy. I cannot believe that. But that just says yeah. a lot. Like, And that's what, like, okay, we're going to get into, like, a, a conversation that everybody's been having lately. But, like, that just reminds me of, like, us. We're doing all this AI talk, and it's like, we still have stuff back here that has not been addressed. And we're like, no, nah, let's just right. go ahead and jump ahead. Like, <laughs> right. so how are you feeling yeah. with like the, the, all the AI conversation going on right now? I, I don't think we're ready for it mm-hmm. uh, on a base level. I don't think we're ready for it. I think it came too quick and we did, didn't prepare for one, the fact that it's not ready. Like AI is just not ready for anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, like we're still dealing with technology, like, automatic bathroom faucets that don't recognize dark skin <laughs> like we're still dealing with that you can't even talk about ai yet <laughs> Bro. Um, but like but but as a designer i feel like it's more of a tool i don't see it ever replacing anybody yeah, yeah. that's how i feel too i think <laughs> when it first came out i was like oh this would be a perfect opportunity for um like stock imagery like stock websites are basically that already yeah. it's just a mosh posh of like yeah. random scenes and, and pe- like random photo shoots that people put together that like right. don't really mean anything it's like the same thing so i think for us it, it'll yeah. benefit us because we'll be able to kind of ideate really fast or create for inspiration sure. really quickly create mood boards that kind of yeah. stuff um but i don't think right. it'll ever be able to Again, there's a humanness when it comes to art. Like, we don't buy, yeah. like, I mean, my wife talk about this. Like, you go to Target and Target sells paintings too, but you don't go, yeah. like, to, to Target to be like fawning over the paintings in the Target, like, Target section. And right. it's like, but you exactly. will go to an artist that you support and be like, I'll drop a thou on this painting that'll never be made again. Why? Because that person made it. Like, that's art. That's not. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Exactly. I feel like, like we're putting, like like you said, we're moving too quick. We're moving too quick, and I feel like we haven't really studied the implications of AI. Yeah. Like, y'all need to go back and watch iRobot for one. <laughs> one million percent. <laughs> <laughs> the first scene. You just need the first scene right. is all you need. That's it. That's it. And, um, but, like, I think about companies like Levi's and how, like, the as soon as they hear about AI, the first thing they hear is saving money and not thinking mm-hmm. about their professional image. Like, I'm not sure if you heard about the Levi's thing, but they're Mm-mm. talking about getting rid of all their models and having AI designed portraits of people wearing their clothes to quote unquote promote diversity. <laughs> ooh, that was in one sentence? Did they put, ooh, that's, that's a rough one. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm like, y'all just gonna fire all the models of color? To promote that, di- <laughs> to promote diversity. <laughs> okay. I just, I just wonder. It lately, it's been like a, a, with the writer strike too, like the writer strike going on, right. and I'm just like, what? And I heard like they were just like, you guys, we would like that you don't use AI uh, in writing scripts as one of their like right. things that they're asking for, and it's just like crazy that these executives are like, no. We're going to do whatever we kind of want with this. And I'm like, this is where capitalism falls apart is if we can't even, what are we supposed to do when you built a system on us having jobs? And then you're like, well, no, our, our end goal was always to have a a computer or a robot do this. We don't care about y'all. So it's like, but that's what our, that's what this whole society and everything's built on is people having jobs. So right. what's next? If you're going to, if you're going to go that way, then you also got to speak on what your solutions are going to be to move forward is how I feel, but that's right. not capitalistic. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. Most well, definitely. Yeah. I just feel like we just haven't really an- analyzed the implications of AI enough, but, um, and especially in TV, that sounds really weird. Having AI replaced writers. Like if you just look at the evolution of, TV shows from like, let's say the 80s and 90s to now, it's really like we, we kind of saw this coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like just like the decline in the quality of TV. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like I used to watch old shows when I was in college, like Murder She Wrote. 
Yeah. And um, it's really interesting to see <clears throat> how our society really values curse words or like values or devalues curse words. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I, I remember watching this one episode of Murder, She Wrote, and they bleeped out the word hell. <laughs> 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 and like now, don't we only pay to hear like for HBO to hear one other curse word? <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah, that's crazy. I just yeah, and I just the last time that there was a writer strike, the thing that they did was reality TV, and since then reality TV right. has like been the thing. Um, but I just feel like as yeah. I watch TV more and more recently, I'm just like, ooh, this is getting stale. Like, all all of yeah, it is. is just getting stale and really bad. And I'm like, I just wonder if this medium's going to fall out of favor and people maybe migrate over to a YouTube where it's back to people making things. So. Right. For sure. That's that's Which, my... I, 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 I love YouTube. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Which I hope that is the case. Like, they just start picking up more shows from YouTube because I feel like I think people are tired of seeing old shows remade and then also diminished at the same time. <laughs> yes, like the co- like the core taken out of them, and it's just like, why are we? Right. Why are we doing this? This isn't this isn't the reason right. why it was created in the first place. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. TV just going down for sure. <laughs> That's yeah. What's one like? This is. It wasn't on the list, but what is one of your favorite TV shows, like, of all time? Oh, goodness. Um, favorite TV? Dang, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> so one that comes to mind was this show called uh, White Collar. I used to be a big USA Ooh. fan. Yes. USA Network, so like, punk, White Collar, all those. Psych? Psych was on there, too, wasn't it? Yeah, Psych was good. And what I used to love about White Collar was, like, it wasn't just a cop show. It was the first time, you, like, you really got to see criminals working with the cops, which I feel like not many cop shows do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True. And and just, like, the art side of it. You never really get to see a primetime show that involves art. <laughs> yeah, that's a great that point. That first time seeing it. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, I never I never seen White Collar. I, I feel like I used to watch USA for a different show but i cannot remember what it is right now um but i think my all-time favorite is probably breaking bad just like how concise and like Mm -hmm. how thought out and like they knew how to end it i like a show when it's like we thought this out and we're gonna end it when it's time to end it i i think that's another problem with like network tv too is just like like Supernatural. Supernatural was great when it first like came out, <laughs> and then oh, it kind of went too long. Well, you you know what? I just remember this is actually my favorite TV show. Have you seen God Friend of Me? No. It was like God basically reaches out to this guy on social media to help people, and like they assume it's using AI to to find out that these people are in trouble and they need your help like right now. And it's kind of like this old show, Touched by Angel, but like a, with a yeah. social media take. And I, I swear we end shows way too quick. Like we just give up on shows way too quick. It got through yeah. two seasons and they cut it because it was the 12th watch, most watched show on Sunday nights. Now, who watches TV on Sunday nights, <laughs> first of all? Yeah. <laughs> you going to cut it because it's all watched? <laughs> that was like, yeah, that was one of my favorite shows that really got me through the week back then. When it first Dang, came that's crazy. And that's another thing that they've been talking about is like shows like that where it was like, yeah. well, the ratings are too low. With the boom of like right. streaming, they're taking shows. Like shows are only getting to like the 12th like twelfth watch because so many – like there's so many out there right. now. So that show probably would still be around if it like happened like in the height of the streaming era is like another thing they're talking right. about. So that's exactly. crazy. I hate that feeling though. When it's like, oh, oh I yeah. love this. And then you're like, they're like, nah, not coming back. And you're like, right. What? <laughs> but I love and it. Like, 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 right. And then just finding out the reasons they cut shows too is really yeah. interesting. There's one I that I really liked. <laughs> yeah. There was one that I liked. Um, <laughs> Young, Young Justice. Uh, it used to be on Cartoon Network. And one of the reasons that I heard they cut it was because too many girls were watching it. 
And they were like, what? that's not what? why we made it. This is a show for young boys. So they ended up, like, the show was great. I think they got through two seasons. Yeah. And then they canceled it on Cartoon Network because of that. And then recently, they've uh, DC has brought it back on HBO Max. But it was like, <laughs> that's your reason? Like, right? it sounds like, but, bit, but like petty. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is really petty. <laughs> but it's also <laughs> interesting, like, looking how shorter seasons have gotten over the years. Like, I was watching some, sh- I forget what show it was, in, like, the early 2000s. It had, like, 30 episodes in one season. Yes. <laughs> like, I'd be lucky to get 10 nowadays, you know? <laughs> Man. And now they're trying to even go shorter. They're, like, eight. And I'm like, right. this is not a season. <laughs> this is not. This is, like, a quarter of a season or half a season. <laughs> yeah. Because I recently watched um, Swarm. Swarm on Amazon. Um, oh, uh, Donald Glover. That? It was I it's weird. I will say it's a weird show. Um, but it was enjoyable. And it it's the it's kind of like an Atlanta episode, but like stretched out over mm-hmm. a whole season. But it was just I felt yeah. like it was really short. And then because they had to end it so short, they didn't have a lot of time to kind of like build out the universe and the character and I'm a universe guy. Like that's why I really love brand, like br- love branding is to build out a universe yeah. and have something you can play in. It's so much like cool to me, but I feel like with short seasons, you don't get that. Like the first episode, you have to be like, yeah. well, they're running down a mountain and you're like, wait, why are we running already? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Br- branding in TV shows is really interesting and just how the industry operates. I was extremely close to um, branding the movie Wendell, Wendell and Wild from Jordan Peele. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I love that movie's great. Yeah. Yeah, the movie's great. And like I, me and this other guy named uh, Labasas, he's out Saw of Brazil. That, yeah. We worked together. Yep. On, yeah. And um, we worked together on a few local concepts and then he made his own and I made my own. And we sent them all and they were like, you know what? Never mind. We're good. <laughs> I didn't know that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, it was really odd. Um, I mean, we got paid. <laughs> but yeah, nonetheless, yeah, yeah. just like the feeling of like going through the process and like putting our heart into something and just finding out that like we're good. <laughs> That's crazy. How does a process like that even happen? Like, do they just contact you? Like, what are kind of some of the steps? Yeah, yeah they reached out about um, having a custom typeface made based on the logo that they had already designed. Okay. And then I guess they figured we don't like this logo anymore. So they reached out to Labasas to design the logo. And then he reached out to me about collaborating on the logo since I'm making the typeface. So like Dope. we can figure out how to sync everything up. Yeah. And then it was like, well, we were like, why don't you make this? And so I made something and he made something and we sent it all to him. And uh, unfortunately, they ended up with the logo that they had already made before they hired us. Mm. Uh, but we were so proud of our work that we just kind of shared all of our progress, and he showed he showed his, and I shared mine on Instagram. So, but it was amazing it was just so sick. to work with him. Yeah, yeah his work his work is sick. You're yeah. like when I saw that, He's I was wild. like, oh yeah. man! And to see the co- different concepts, I was like, these like some of those concepts yeah. are like so inspirational to me. Like I. Anytime right. I see something like that, I hit the save on Instagram, and I'm like, I got to come back to this. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. like, I mean, I know I'm a type designer, but lettering isn't really my thing. Mm. And it, I didn't really get to explore lettering until I started working with him. And like every now and again, I'll look at his work, and I'm like, dang, I wish I could do that. <laughs> Bro, I love lettering. Lettering's one of my favorite things. I don't know if I do it well. I'm just kind of playing around with letters. But I have fun with it. I just think it's one of those things where it's like you have something steeped in like letters have been around forever. So, But I right. get to kind of riff on these things that have been around forever. And they make up words and these words together mean things to people. So that's kind of like my thoughts behind it. And it's so cool to kind of like, oh, I took 20 minutes to throw something together and then just kick it out. And you're like. Let's move on. So it's, I've always struggled right. to find, yeah, art projects that are like quick. Like sometimes I'll do right. a, a lino cut project and lino cut takes days to tr- like get it transferred and then I got a cut. And then three days later, I don't care anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
But with this, I can kick something out quick. So lettering, I would definitely, if you if you find time where you're just like, hey, let me play with this, I would definitely say right. have some fun with it. Just create. But you're already like type, I'm sure. How do you come up with type? Like, uh, like I know you you do right. like movements and stuff, but do you do any? Are you do you have plans to do any that are like outside of that? Oh, most definitely. I have a ton okay. of typefaces that I just have in the store that have nothing to do with vocal type. And I just kind of do for fun because they have no political or, or race or ethnic relevance. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> dope. I would love to see that stuff though. Oh yeah. Most definitely. Okay. Like, um, I go, I'm still trying to figure out how to put those things out. So like okay. my favorite project that I'm working on right now is probably, probably the largest project that I've worked on to date. Do you, did you ever draw that S thing when you were in school? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm making a giant font family based on the S. <laughs> Bro, I feel like your 14 year old me's like, like, right, you're pulling inspiration from that time, which is really cool because every millennial is like, we I drew that, that S 19 million times. That's dope, right? Exactly, exactly. And then, like, figuring out ways to transform it. Like all of a sudden it com becomes like block letters and then bubble letters just by like rounding the corners and, <laughs> Dang. and figure out other ways to mess with it. So yeah, right now I think I'm at 20 font families, <laughs> but none of them are done. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's where the exploration phase is at. It's that 20 Dang. font families. <laughs> that's sick. I, I can't wait for that. I'll be, I'll be uh, so excited. I'll have to throw on some, some nineties garb to kind of get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I wasn't 13 in the 90s, <laughs> but maybe 2000s. Right, um, exactly. So we're gonna hit. I think we got we got time for two more. I think. Um, cool. I mean, I'm here. I don't have nothing after this. So whatever you need. Dope. Um, if you were going to live on a desert island, but could only take one thing with you, what would that be? What? My water bottle? <laughs> <laughs> You're just thinking about life? <laughs> so I just got to stay yeah, alive. Like life. <laughs> yeah. Water bottle or a cell phone. One of the two. If I had service, I'd take my cell phone. <laughs> yeah. I, I always feel like like you ask questions like this nowadays and everyone's like, my cell phone's my Swiss Army knife. And it's like, yep. is it? <laughs> 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 like that's our protection now. Like we're like, I feel protection. Right. If yeah. I got my my knife or my um phone next to me and it's like in that situation it wouldn't really help but cool i think right. uh if it was me i would definitely take i've been really getting into reading lately so i think it would probably be like a book like reading's always been something that i like has ch like i've struggled with i think it was more like now being an adult i think it was the adhd i think i just didn't have like an understanding of that so i just would try to read and i'm like i read two pages and I'm like, I don't care about this anymore and move on. But yeah. nowadays I'm like, and I'd read really boring stuff, read stuff that we got in school. And it's just like, I don't really care to be reading that. But now I've been like exploring the genres that I like, the books that I like. I read Re ready wow. player one a couple months ago. Loved it. Oh, like oh, the oh. first one and the second one, it was really good. And then to see like, they built something around like culture and video games and like, it was a really fun and easy read. So it kind of has like given me that, that like rocket on my back to keep like trying new stuff. So I'm reading Amazing. one called a darker shade of magic right now. And that one's been really cool. So I'm all about the sci-fi. Um, like not like, like fun, like that kind of stuff, and then also into like anime uh, and stuff. So amazing! My favorite Are, that I would keep rereading is called uh, "The Alchemist" by this guy Paolo Coelho. I feel and like I've heard of that before. Probably, I'm like at this point, I'll read any book that he makes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is my guy. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like if you read "The Alchemist," like. Read it from cover to cover, and then think about the fact that this dude wrote that book in two weeks. 
Wow. And it's it been a bestseller since the nineties. <laughs> wow. Do you do you read often? Yeah. Like, are you when people see you? Do you have? It might not be a fiction book, but do you have something in your hand no. that you're reading? I feel like nowadays, pretty much the only time, thing I have time to read for is regarding some sort of protest. Got gotcha. you <laughs> for vocal. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm trying to get back into it. Like, I have this that, this long line of books on my coffee table that like just keep staring me in the face every day. Like. Trey, you gotta read one of them. Just one. <laughs> you gotta pick one me that up. Has to do with work. Yeah, pick me up. <laughs> Today's the day, and then you put it back down. I was right. just cleaning up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. Exactly. Yeah, man. My mom used to always be like, she was an avid reader, so we would always see her reading oh, yeah, some mom, romance too. book. But she was always disappointed because neither me or my brother read. So she was like, how did I have two kids who don't read at all? And I, I, at this point, I'd be like, mom, you never put, like, you should have put more interesting things in front of us probably. And then maybe we would have, like, bit a little bit more. So she put Harry Potter in front of me for the first time. Yeah. And I took that, like, took me to another place. And I read the first right. one in, like, a, I think it was a winter break. I read the whole first book in like a winter break. So I should have known that that's what was going on, but I was a kid. <laughs> right. Right. I feel like um, I remember when I was in fourth grade, I went to um, this, what they call an international day school. Oh. And they had us doing like hardcore reading. Like I'm in the, I'm what, eight or nine years old reading Ben Carson's biography. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> and the only thing I remember from reading that biography is that his mom made him write, him and his brother made them write a, read a book and write a book report every week until they graduated wow. high school. Every week from like, I remember like single digit ages <laughs> until high school. Dang. And, and then later in life, he found out that his mom couldn't read. <laughs> That was her thing. That was her gift. Yeah, that was, that was her like, thing. Get them to educate themselves the way she could. Yeah. Which I thought was dang. amazing. But at the same time, I'm like, damn, I hope my mom don't read this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been real. You're like, you're hiding it. You're like, you're like, this book doesn't exist anymore. At that all. makes sense, though. Like, wasn't, it, wasn't Ben Carson like a neurosurgeon or something? He was like educated, yeah, exactly. like very well educated. Yeah. Um, exactly. That's crazy. I couldn't even imagine. No. I'd be like, book report number one. I'm like, <laughs> where can I go look this up somewhere and have someone else do this for me? Right. <laughs> right. You know, I'm like, at the time, you know, I'm like eight or nine years old. We still have dial up, so I can't look it up on the internet oh. without her knowing. <laughs> <laughs> dial up. That was a time. That was a time. It's actually, it's actually really interesting. I never realized how like certain parts of America still have access to so little. Um, mm. So when I got to college, we're talking 2011 to 2015, I had friends who still lived in parts of Maryland that still had dial up. Wow. I guess I didn't yeah. think about that either. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, just I just thought it disappeared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They just don't have access to, and that makes sense. Like, because it's going to be closer to like the bigger cities. People who are anywhere right. further than that probably are just going to have to landline it. Oh man. Yep. Exactly. Yep. In fact, um, one of the girls in my design class, she still had Earthlink. I don't know if you remember Ooh. Earthlink. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yep. That's just that just brings a whole nother conversation. Yeah, it <laughs> to does. Like, <laughs> We're talking about AI and people don't even have access. Like, access right. to, like, jeez. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I always ask this final question. The podcast is called Creative Questions. So, this is going yep. back to kind of that creative tiv- creativity piece. Um, so, the last question is, what is creativity to you? I feel like 
creativity is pretty much everything. <laughs> uh, from like how you plan your day to like finding a route to work to avoid traffic. Like that's a creative way around traffic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from yeah, I mean everything is creativity from the labels on your food at the grocery store to the grocery store's logo and the tags on the clothes you wear, the clothes you wear, pretty much everything is creativity to me. Dang, I love that. That's like uh and that's what's so I I asked this question to one other person so far. It's just like you realize that it's everywhere and like it we're made of it. Sure. So as I'm I feel like right. as I go on with this show, I wonder if creativity turns into like it's just being alive, like it's being human. Kinda. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I, mean, I, I never thought of putting it that simply, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I like that answer. That like great that. answer. I like that. <laughs> Yep. I'm like, I'm going to need to use that quote somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Don't you love that when you're on like a podcast and you like say something that's like, right. hey, that's part of my brand now. I'm going to have to write that somewhere right. and put that on the shirt. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's I love dope. that. You know, it was interesting about creativity, I think, is that so few people realize that they are creative. Mm. They do. And like, people think they actually have to yeah. like really try. Like, Go hard at yeah. it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> or like, people only thought I was creative when I was drawing something coming up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you tell your, like, like, I tell, you tell your, well, my dad, I'm like, yeah, dad, I do graphic design. And it's like, he, he thinks it's so like rigid. And it's like, nah, I draw ugly letters mm -hmm. on my iPad sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how simple it can be. So, right. That's sick, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This was amazing. No problem. Is there anything you want to, um, you got coming out soon and you want to kind of talk about the pod this podcast episode should probably be out in the next, I think three, four weeks. So, um, is there anything you want to plug? Yeah. Oh goodness. Uh, so check out my book, Dreaming Color. Um, that was a really fun poster book that I, sorry, I didn't have you in. That was a wild journey though. To say the All good, bro. <laughs> I saw that. I was and, like, hey uh, man, again, I was just cheering you on. I was. <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. So check that out. Uh, what else? I'm working on my own personal website uh, this time around. So kind of separate from vocal type, but still with some vocal type projects you've seen. Uh, so I'm hoping to release that in a few months. And uh, that's about it. Dope. Tell them where they can find you at across the internet. Most definitely. Make it easy for you. My website is vocaltype.co, and that is also my Instagram. <laughs> Dope. Thank you so much, Trey, for spending some time with me. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Creative Questions. Like, comment, or subscribe to allow us to keep making more episodes. I appreciate you for being here and I'll see you on the next one.